Hello everyone, this is Yoda from Team Loaded bringing you another video for NerdStomper.com. Today's video is going to be on the Soul Stealer, and he's the carry hero of choice for a lot of top tier players. And the reason for that is because he's just got so many different things he can do. He can farm the jungle, he can farm the lane quickly, and he can also gank. The reason for that is because of his first skill, Demon Hand. Now, d most normal nukes can do about 300 damage in one go, but Demon Hand is different. It has three charges. Each one can do 300 damage. So you've got a huge amount of early damage output for dealing damage to heroes and also for farming. Another thing that this huge amount of damage output gives you is an edge when you're soloing mid. As soon as you hit level 3, you should basically be able to beat anybody in a fight except maybe Pebbles. When you play Soul Stealer, generally you're going to want to solo mid unless you're landing bottom with Glacius, which is a very specific strategy that some people try to do. The reason for that is because, remember what I mentioned, Demon Hand is your most powerful skill? Well, if you solo mid, your Demon Hand gets to higher levels faster, which allows you to quickly take over the game. Your starting items are going to want to be two Minor Totems, two Duck Boots, and some Regeneration. The reason you get these items is because you need some regen so you don't just get harassed out of your lane, and the most damage you can get at level 1 is two Minor Totems and two Duck Boots. You need early damage so that your early last hits will allow you to gain souls with your second skill. Laning with Soul Stealer isn't the easiest thing to do. There are a lot of key things you need to do early that can make or break your game. At the early levels, like 1 and 2, it's very important to get less hits so they can increase your damage by your second skill. A good idea to get last hits early is to stand really close to the creep wave. That way, your attacks will have less distance to travel than your enemy's attacks, and last hitting will be much easier for you. If your enemy starts harassing you, however, you're probably going to have to back off, otherwise you're going to take a lot of damage. Once you hit level 3, though, it's time to go aggressive. Since your dukes are so much more efficient since they only cost 75 mana, and you also have a higher damage output, no one is going to be able to fight you, and also no one is going to be able to beat you in an attrition war. If you can keep up this kind of aggression, then most enemies will either have to heal or will be forced to fight you, in which case you will be able to defeat them since your hero has higher firepower. At the very least, you'll be able to force them to stay away from the creep way, which will give you a good amount of free farm. The first item you're going to go for is a bottle, and once you get it, it's very important that you get the runes every two minutes. It's because the bottle and bottling runes is how you're going to power up your endless stream of nukes. Also, if you happen to get a lucky haste or invisible rune, then you'll probably be able to get a kill in one of the side lanes or even in middle. The next thing I want to go over is your general item build for Soul Stealer. After you finish your core items that are bottle and marchers, you have a couple choices. Uh, first, you have to choose between Post Haste and Steam Boots, and you also have to choose between Assassin's Shroud and Portal Key. My favorite item build for public games is to get a Post Haste and then get an Assassin's Shroud. These two will allow you to get sneak up and do a lot of cool moves, like using Assassin's Shroud to sneak up to land a really good ultimate on one or multiple enemy heroes. Having the Post Haste in addition to Assassin's Shroud will essentially allow you to sneak up on anybody as long as you have, your ultimate is not on cooldown. The additional move speed you get from post haste and having an assassin's shroud will also allow, to allow you to chase down a lot of people, as well as escape from time to time. Some people would argue that your assassin's shroud is easily countered by items like dust of appearance and heroes like pestilence, which is why your next item is going to be geometer's bane. Having a geometer's bane will allow you to split, which will remove dust of appearance and also pestilence's ultimate, which will also which will allow you to escape anyway with your assassin's shroud. In addition to that. The value from having Assassin's Shroud in early game fights is just so large, since you're allowed to, since you're able to sneak up and do full damage ultimates to enemy heroes, as well as escape and use high move speed, and also get bonus damage from your Assassin's Shroud. Many times it's reasonable to get a portal key instead of Assassin's Shroud, however. This is usually true when you have a team that's able to set up good ultimates for you. Generally, teams with a lot of area of effect stuns and ultimates fit into this category. One important thing to note is that Getting a portal key is a bad decision if you if the other team has a Vindicator or a Kronos. This is because no matter what, if you use your portal key and try to ultimate, then you will be interrupted by Vindicator or Kronos and then focused by the enemy team. To decide between Steam Boots and Post Haste, it's usually pretty simple. If you're going to be able to get your Post Haste before 12 minutes, then it's worth it, and if you're not, then you might as well just go Steam Boots. Of course, 12 minute mark is pretty arbitrary, however, I find it a pretty good indicator. The reason is, when, if you have your, if you get your post haste very early, then you'll be able to teleport to counter gank and help allies who are being attacked. 
However, if you're not going to have your post haste until after 12 minutes, then you're probably not strong enough to be able to make a huge difference in team fights early game. And if that's the case, then you might as well just pay for the cheap power that Steam Boots offers. Once you've upgraded your boots and gotten your first core item, uh, I think I mentioned before, you're almost always going to want Geometer's Bane if you want for Portal Key, because this, dam this item offers so much raw damage and protection. From there, it really depends on the game. If your opponents have a lot of magical damage that Shrunken Head negates, then you're going to want that. If you find that you need to survive a lot more in fights, then you're going to want a Symbol of Rage. If your team's lacking in slows or disables, then you'll want a Frost Wolf Skull. If you want to damage buildings a lot and also evade a little bit, then Wing Bow is good and so is Demonic Breastplate. Nullstone and Savage Mace are used to counter your enemy heroes. Nullstone is good if your enemies have a lot of single target skills and ultimates like Rampage and Succubus. And Savage Mace is used to counter opposing Wing Bows since it gives you a true strike. Now that we've got our item build down, I want to go over our skill build. You're, you're going to want to start off with your second skill, Soul Steel, since you're not going to use your level 1 nuke and you might as well start building up souls early. From there you're going to want to level up your nuke twice, since at level 3 your nuke gives you enough, a lot of nuking power. From there you're just going to want to level your nuke over your Soul Steel, skipping your ultimate at level 6. So at level 8 you should have max nuke and max Soul Steel. Getting your ultimate is worth it at level 9, since your ultimate offers a lot of early game damage and minus armor and slow. This means you're going to get your ultimate at level 9, 11, and 16. I like to just get one point in the aura at level 10 since one point in the aura gives minus 2 armor and future points in the aura only give minus 1. In addition, from level 12 to 15 you're going to need a little bit of extra mana and HP since none of your items generally give you that. And you need a lot of mana to be spamming the nukes that you're going to use to farm and fight. Once you hit level 17, generally you're going to have an extra damage item which gives more value to your minus armor aura, so I like to start leveling again at that point. When you play Soul Stealer, generally your tactics should be to use your nukes to kill creeps quickly and farm very quickly, which should build on the level advantage you already have from soloing. You can leverage this level advantage by either participating a lot in early game team fights and assisting your team, or you can go and farm for the entire game. If you continue to farm for the entire game, your farming gear will be faster than most other heroes because A, you'll already be over level, and B, you have Demon Hand. In general, however, you're going to want to be farming a lot more than you are fighting, since when you're farming, you are farm you're certainly going to be farming much faster than your enemy heroes. However, in a fight, anything could happen. Once you've mastered the basics of Soul Stealer, there are some tricks you can employ to raise your game to the next level. The first trick is with Assassin's Shroud and Soul Burst. If you use Assassin's Shroud and to move directly on top of an enemy hero and use Soul Burst, then they're going to take damage from every single soul, which is about 1500 damage. Needless to say, that's generally enough to at least gain you the advantage in the fight and probably just kill him instantly. Another trick that most Soul Stealers like to use is to stack neutrals. If you stack neutral camps, then Soul Stealer has an especially easy time dealing with them because of his demon hand. The benefits of stacking neutrals are pretty obvious. You basically get a lot, a huge jump in your gold and experience. If you're having trouble landing demon hands on enemy heroes, you should try attacking them before you use demon hands. Attacking the enemy hero will cause your hero to face in that direction, which will make your demon hands that much easier. Once you've mastered this trick, hitting demon hands should never be a challenge, no matter how hard your enemies try to juke. Soul Stealer is an extremely powerful hero, being a dominant force both in the early game and the late game. It's not uncommon for a Soul Stealer to be three levels over everyone else in the game, as well as keeping a similar advantage in gold per minute. Hopefully you've learned a lot from watching this video, and I wish you happy soul stealing. Once again, this is Yoda from Team Loaded, bringing you this video for NerdStomper.com.